This is an introductory level demonstration of how one would create a figure or figurine out of clay. So as long as people have been making things out of clay as a medium, people have been making people, making little figures of humanoid forms. So there's a lot of variation involved in doing this, but the core of it's pretty simple. Uh, body, limbs, and the head. So I'm going to break this down in a, a simple, easy to follow way. If you've never worked in this way before, it should be easy to grab onto and come away with a result. Here we go. The first thing that I'd recommend doing with your plastic kneadable clay after getting any air pockets out of it is to roll five balls roughly the size of a golf ball, maybe a little bit larger, and then roll one out that's roughly the size of a tennis ball, a little larger than that. And this is how it should start out with those six pieces, and then you'll be ready to go to start putting your figure together. Take your golf ball sized pieces and stick your thumb into one of them. And then using your other hand, cup around that ball that's now on the tip of your thumb and squeeze it around your thumb until it looks like what you're seeing here. This is basically a rough leg or a rough arm, depending on how you manipulate it next. The importance of what we're doing here is twofold. One, we're compressing the clay, which will eventually give it strength. You don't need to know too much about that yet. The other thing is it's making a hollow limb. What you don't want to do is have everything be solid. Rookie mistake. You have a lot of problems that you're setting yourself up for if you build solid. So right from the get-go, we're going to have the limbs be hollow. So here then you're going to have four of those pieces that are squeezed around the thumb to make arms and legs. They'll all look about the same at this point. That doesn't matter. You just want to get to that stage first. With that fifth golf ball size piece pictured right here, you're going to insert your thumb, but instead of trying to squeeze it down your finger like you did with these, smear your thumb around on the inside in a circular motion while cupping on the outside to create what is like an empty ball with a smaller opening on one side. This is eventually going to be the head. So it's the same exact amount of clay, it's one of those golf ball size pieces, but you're manipulating it slightly differently, pinching it between your fingers, again compressing the clay, and importantly as well, keeping the walls consistent. You don't want to have one be much thicker than the other. Keep them all about the same across all of these pieces. Now up here, what you're seeing is that tennis ball sized piece of clay. What you'll have done at this point is cut it in half and then pinch it around to make a bowl-like form, a round bottomed bowl. So just rock back and forth on the surface if it's set there. But you're pressing and pinching your fingers in in order to give it that appearance. That's going to be the torso. Eventually we're going to put those back together again. You'll have a hollow torso. You can put that piece right down here on is the head and then these are the limbs that will follow. So here they are having sat for a little while. You want them to get to a harder state. The more they dry out the, the stiffer they'll become. So this will be heading towards a level of dryness we call leather hard or cheese hard. It will feel like cold leather a little bit of resistance to it. It's so pliable, but you can have it stand up on its own without slouching over or deforming, or if you bump into it, it won't just dent it easily. So these will have a little bit more of a forgiving property because you can stick them together and they won't just squish into nothing again. So let them sit for a little while, depending on if there's a lot of airflow in the room or not, if they're out in the sun, or what have you, they might dry fast or slower. So keep an eye on them. You'll be learning the consistency of clay through touch. But that's the next step is to let these set up a little bit before you do anything else. We've rough formed everything first and now we're letting them dry. And you'll see they're all upside down right now so that the air is evenly drying out the outside of these surfaces. 
Now, a very important point is connections, and that is to connect something well without it falling apart at any of the other stages later on in the ceramic process. The way that you get a good connection is with slipping and scoring. Scoring the clay will give a texture for the slip to grab onto. The slip is a slurry of clay and water. There's so much water in the clay that it's like a milkshake or a thick cream. And that's going to be used to wet the surfaces in between. It's not a glue. Don't think of it like a glue. You can't just put a little bit of slip on the surface, cram something onto it, and expect it to stick. What that slip is actually doing is moistening the local areas that you want attached to one another. Like I said already, these will be leather hard or close to it, and that's not the best stage to connect things together. So we want to soften just select areas that will be grabbing onto one another and then letting those slowly set up to that same level. Of hardness. This tool that you see in the center here is called a rib. It's a serrated rib. It has these little teeth on the outside. That's great for making these score marks on the outsides of the edges that you're going to be connecting together. So here's where the legs would attach to the body, where the body attaches to itself, where the arms attach to the body, and where the head attaches to the body. Now you could also use something like a fork for this, but you want to be careful to not gouge too deeply. You might accidentally create an air pocket that way. So just evenly mar the surface so that it has a texture like this, and then that will be ready to go for the next level. Now I've added slip to those two body halves, and then I've pressed it together into what looks like an egg, a large egg. You don't see the seam anymore. The seam would be right here, but I've smoothed that over with my hands, just smudged it around so that you don't see it anymore. So I've pressed them together so they're well connected. There's a strong connection between them, but I've smoothed it out so that the clay is grabbing onto uh, one side to the other and holding itself together that way as well. But that's the way it will appear. So start with the body first, put those two sides together, and you'll wind up with this. Then you'll do the same for the legs. You'll just add the slip and stick them on to that underside. Now, this figurine is going to look more like a balloon figurine at first. That's fine. We're not getting too worried about details yet. It's just about connecting these pieces together, the, the broad strokes, the major details, the limbs, the head, and then the parts of the body. Now, before I actually attach it, I put those legs underneath and I trace around with a needle tool. Then I take the leg off and then where that circle has been formed by the needle tool, I know to go in with my rib and score it. Because you need to score and slip both sides that you're sticking together, not just one. That's going to be a weak connection. So make a map of where you're going to score, score it, and then slip it together. So there's that map that I'm referencing. It's drawn out. That's where I'm going to put my score marks down, and that's where the legs will attach to the body. So here you see the application of the slip. You see it's a nice creamy, thick consistency. You'll also notice that there are now these holes in the body itself, right in the center of where those legs are going to stick to the body. The reason for this is because you do not want to create an air pocket that's totally concealed inside of the clay, whether it's tiny or large. And if I had just stuck these legs onto the body, even if they're connected well, I'll trap all of that air inside and that moisture inside, and that's going to lead to an explosion later on. Ideally, what we want to do here is create an opening, a network system that's running throughout the entire figure. So the air that's inside of those legs could get up into the body, could get into the arms. So whenever you attach a segment, you want to make sure that there's a hole there so that air can pass in between. So I'd say about the size of an index finger pushed through is what you want to aim for with the sizes we're working with here. 
Press together firmly until you see the slip ooze out of that crevice. Then you'll know that there's no air in there, it's pressed everything out, and then you can blend those parts of the clay together. So there the legs are attached. Now you'll also notice over here on the arms, I've pinched them a little bit. I've just grabbed about two thirds of the way up from that opening and squeezed. I've compressed the clay, gave it a little bit of a ring there, which is going to serve as a distinction between the hands and then the arms. So a very subtle thing to do, but I think it's helpful to do it now before you attach anything so that you don't accidentally rip the arms off of the body when you try to do this later. So wrap your thumb to your index finger, put that around it, and squeeze. Then you'll wind up with that form. Like you see here. Now, unless the arm is going to be sticking straight out the side of the body, like they're running up to hug someone, you're going to want to cut that arm on a 45 degree angle with a knife before you attach it. This will allow for the arm to be held down towards the side, a little more of a natural pose. It could also be held up in the air if you swivel it up the other way, so it's pointing upwards. Think about the way that you want that arm to be positioned because this is where you make these darts and you cut into the clay to make the surface line up the way that's advantageous for your, your design. So you can see the bevel I've cut on the arms, roughly a 45 degree angle. I've slipped, well I've scored, I'm going to slip these edges here, but I've put a hole through for the arms as well. So again, the air inside of here is connected to the air inside the rest of the body. Now I'm planning it out. and attaching it like I attach the legs. I know that I want this arm pointed outwards a little bit, so I'm putting it in that position right now while I'm attaching it. Now the other arm is attached, that one held down towards the side a little bit more. But you'll see a body coming together here, albeit a plump doughboy looking body. Again, that can be modified, that can be whittled down and refined. So there's the head getting attached. Again, the slip oozing out. I put a hole through that so there's shared air inside. Now smoothed out. So we have a very rough figurine here. There's the back side of this figurine. Now what I'm doing at this point is turning it into something, giving this blank, anonymous, plump figurine some kind of an identity. So anytime you add a piece to your sculpture, if it's thick at all, you want to make sure there is a hole like you're seeing here in these feet pieces I've created, and then a hole in the piece itself. So again, it's a shared opening between them. The reason why you want to do this is so that you don't have some part of your sculpture that's very thick, especially not something that's very thick in comparison to everything else. It's not going to dry at the same rate, it's not going to fire at quite the same rate, and it can cause a crack along that seam. So it's good practice to have everything be consistent as far as wall thickness goes. Now, this one piece down here, that's a bit of an exception, is going to be a faceplate here. I want this to be a spaceman, like some kind of a sci-fi character. So this is a very thin face shield that's going on here. Something like this, you can just score and slip and attach. Same with these small pieces here. Those are very small that's not as big of a deal as something like the feet, or obviously the, the arms and the legs and the head. I 
I also want this figurine to have this space backpack for his space gun. So that's what you're seeing here. I cut a hole in the back and now I'm making this shell-like backpack that's attached to it. So those plates now on the face of the figure, on the chest of the figure, that block has been put on top of the hand, makes it look like a space gun, and the backpack is on the back. I've also drawn on the top of its, the surface with lines with my needle tool to indicate where I'm going to put some other textures and details. You can draw on the surface all you want because if you want to erase something, you just smooth it over. But this is a good way to plot things out and plan where you're going to go next. I'm using what's called a ribbon tool here. They come in many different shapes and sizes. What they're good for, like you're seeing here, is taking a gouge out of the clay and peeling up and removing that, that strip of clay that you want out of there. So along the arms on the space suit, I've carved lines that go all the way around. Now I'm doing the same on the legs. It's going to be part of that space suit design. Notice that I wasn't very tidy with it. Those are somewhat rough carved lines put in there. That's okay. Don't get too wrapped up in refining every little step as you go. That's going to end up making everything take a lot longer. It's faster to refine everything in the end. Now you also see I've carved some lines into, into the hand, well, that fist-like form just to indicate a thumb and some fingers, like a glove wrapping onto uh, the handle of that space gun that he's holding. Now that slip that you use to connect things together can also be used to refine the surface. So those rough lines that I had around the arms and the legs, I'm now going over with this thick slip, and that's going to dull down the texture and make it look more smoothed out and aesthetically pleasing. All in all, this is the way that it turns out. I've attached those feet, put some more details on those chest pieces, I've put a hole in the end of that space gun, and another important thing is there is a hole going into the backpack that's not covered up. That's where all of the air inside of this entire figurine is going to escape. There should always be a hole somewhere in your figurine for that air and moisture to escape through. So in this case, it's on the backpack. I'll disguise that later if need be. And there is that vent hole that I mentioned right here. Now, this is later on in the process. This is when I'm putting a luster surface on the figurine. It's already gone through the kiln firing one time, which makes it bisque fired. And when something is bisque fired, it's the consistency of hard chalk. It's not as fragile as it was when it was wet clay, but it's also not finished yet. So be careful in handling your piece as you take it from that firing process to the glazing process. So without getting into too much details, the surface I put on here is like a glaze. It's going to be a glassy surface that melts into the ceramic and then is the surface coating. So you're familiar with that if you've ever washed your hands in a sink or in a bathtub, sat on a toilet, drinking out of a mug, eaten off of a plate. All of those things are glazed. That's what that glassy surface is on the top. When you're talking about sculptures, it's less functional. It's more about the decoration. So in this case, I'm doing my first level of decoration, this luster on the surface. And so you see that figurine sitting inside of the kiln. Um, you'll notice that I broke off his space gun accidentally. Like I said, be careful after you take your piece out of the bisque firing. It's very fragile. Just because you break something doesn't mean you can't put it back together later with some epoxy or other type of glue. So I'm continuing with what I'm doing here, glazing everything, putting it into the kiln to be fired for a final time. Now in the end, this is where my figure wound up. It's much more complex than I expect any of your introductory figures to be. 
the base that I've formed here is made with mixed media, resin, and plastic and other things. The way that the spaceman is floating up in the air, that's a plexiglass rod that sticks up into that hole, the vent hole, actually, where all that air escaped from it. This is holding it up. And then I've built out of plexiglass and mixed media, plastics, this laser beam that he's shooting out of his gun, and also these uh, flame tips that are coming out of his space boots here. And then this is also mixed media, that cord running to his backpack. That's a sculptable epoxy, a sculptable glue. But otherwise, everything else is ceramic on the piece. This is just a possibility of where you could potentially go with the piece. It doesn't have bells and whistles like this does here. You could go this far if you wanted to, but it's not necessary. This is just showing you a possible outcome. Go in any way that you feel most comfortable.